Hey everybody, it's Miranda here and I'm going to be sharing with you guys today a tutorial on how to create this little um, dresser out of matchboxes. It's really, really easy you guys. All you're going to need is obviously the little matchboxes and they look like this. I got mine at Walmart. You can get them in the, they were actually in the um, like silverware aisle where they kept all the utensils at. So kind of an odd place, but check there. I got, they sell like a 20 pack I think for a couple of bucks, so they're super inexpensive. And then besides that, you're just going to need like the papers of your choice to cover this with and like some embellishments for the top of it. I'm going to be using Graphic 45 Lay Romantique paper. I used Secret Garden on this one. And then other than that, you're just going to need some chipboard. I've already cut mine down to size just to save time and really quickly in case you guys are wondering how I cut my chipboard. It's the easiest way that I found to do it is to use my paper cutter. Obviously this is not going to cut chipboard. It's not, you know, heavy duty enough to cut through there. But I just use it to measure it. Say it's three inches. I'll just line it up to there. And then I'll use my X-Acto knife. I just push down here really firmly and then cut it like that. So that's, I still use the same, you know, lines and everything. That's the easiest way I have found to cut through chipboard. And it'll, it'll take a couple of passes with your knife, but it'll go through there eventually. So the measurements for mine, I think all matchboxes vary. So when you get yours, do, definitely do measure it to make sure. But you want pieces for the outside of it all the way around, and then one for the inside piece here. So my measurements were 3 and an eighth by 2 and an eighth for the top and the bottom pieces. And then for the two side pieces, it was 2 and an eighth by 2 and an eighth. And then for my inside piece, it was 2 and an eighth by 2 and a fourth. Okay, so that's what my measurements ended up being. By all means, do double check and make sure that's what size you're going to need for yours. Now, on this one, I used hot glue to glue my little boxes together. But I'm going to use Fabri-Tac on this one because there was just a little bit of an imperfection kind of in here. You can see where they weren't glued together all the way. I mean, it's so minute, you probably, nobody would be able to notice but me because I'm just a nitpicker. But I want to definitely do it a little bit better this time. So I'm going to be using Fabri-Tac to glue these down. And I would say make sure you have these right side up but you can totally move it so it's no big deal but I'm going to put a good amount of Fabri-Tac over all of my boxes and adhere them together four in a stack so it adhere four on top of each other and then four on top of each other again and don't glue those together like don't do your stu two stacks and then glue them together because you're going to put a piece of chipboard in between there so I'm just going to take all of my little match boxes and glue them together. And I'm using Fabri-Tac to make sure it's really pushed down really good and adhered um, nice and solid and there's no gaps there. And just be careful not to put too much because you can glue your little drawers together. So I'm just going to kind of push them back a little bit. And just, you know, put your fingers like this. You can even flatten it on the table to make sure they're exactly lined up perfectly. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing for all of mine and just give them time to dry and then I'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, now that I've got these all glued together, this is what it looks like. And we're going to start adhering our chipboard pieces together. And this just makes it look more solid instead of just gluing these together and then covering it. It really just gives it that extra little detail to um, kind of finish it off. So I'm going to glue my center part first. And I'm going to use Fabri-Tac again. And in case you didn't hear the first time, this one does measure 2 and a half by 2 and a half, or 2 and an eighth by 2 and an eighth. Okay. And what we'll do is when we have all of these on here and they're dry, we will just sew all of the edges. So no black shows and no, uh, no chipboard part. Craft color, I guess, it shows through. And then, of course, we'll be covering with paper, too. So just adhere it down to one side first and make sure it's completely flat all the way around. Okay. And then we're going to adhere the other side. And again, I would use a liquid adhesive because hot glue, it just doesn't do as good a job as of bonding it all together to make it look seamless, you know. You'll kind of have gaps in there. I'm going to make sure I got these facing up.
Okay, this is what it looks like so far. And now we're going to put our top pieces on there. Just making sure they fit just right. I might have to trim it down a teeny tiny bit because you just want it to fit on there perfectly. And I think I do. I'm just going to use my scissors actually and I'm just going to trim this edge just a tiny, tiny fraction just so it fits on there perfectly. Okay, that is perfect. I'm going to check this one too in case I have to cut it. I can do it at the same time. And that one's good to go. Okay, the next step is just sewing all of the sides to cover up the craft color and the chipboard. And I just kind of push my little drawers to the back just a little bit. And I'm going to just use a foam brush. Let me grab one really quickly. That one's a little too big and won't fit in the crevices really well. One second, y'all. I find that foam brushes tend to work a lot better for this. Just um, It keeps a lot of gesso in there and makes it look a lot cleaner for some reason than having brush strokes on there from a regular paintbrush. So I'm just going to take my gesso. And I'm not going to worry about the inner part of the black chipboard because that's going to be covered with paper. I'm just focusing on the edges of it. And then we will be cutting little TT tiny strips of paper to cover this center part up too, but we still want to go ahead and gesso it. The foam just kind of pushes the paint down in all the crevices really well, much much better than a regular paintbrush. Okay, and when I'm doing this, I tend to heat set mine immediately because I feel like if you leave any wet paint or a wet medium on this chipboard, it will make it warp. So I usually heat set mine immediately. Okay, now that I've got the entire thing gessoed, I had an idea to add kind of like a backboard to the dresser. So what I did is I took a scrap piece of chipboard and my Baroque die. I actually tried a couple of different dies first to see which one I liked the best, and I ended up using the Baroque one from Tim Holtz. And I just cut a little piece of chipboard out, and then I cut it down to size to fit on here. So I just cut it out of here, and basically I'm just using this top part of it. Just cut it to fit the backboard of your dresser, so it's going to look like that. Okay, so I went ahead and gessoed this entire thing, and let me do one more coat really quickly just to make sure all the edges are nice and white. And now basically all we're going to need to do is cover this with paper, and then we can start decorating it, which is the fun part. So like I said, I'm going to be using the Le Romantique paper. I'm just going to grab a few pieces here, and I did um, fussy cut an image out and then took this one too. I'm going to have her sitting on top of the little dresser. So just kind of grab your papers and go ahead and do some fussy cutting if you want to of things to add on here. And then this image right here is from this big like collage sheet with all the pictures on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it to fit on the drawer so this whole image will continue down. Hopefully that makes sense and you guys can see what I'm talking about in just a minute. So I'm going to use that image for the front. 
So right now I'm just going to go ahead really quickly and measure all of my sides and then cover it with the paper and I'm going to cover all of them with this pearl paper for the top, bottom, and the two sides. As soon as I have that covered, I will come back and we will move forward. Okay, I have all of my paper adhered to the outside of my dresser and then the little top part too. And then I went ahead and cut my pieces for my drawers. So like I said, I was going to cut that image. You guys will see what I'm talking about over here so that her face shows on the outside of the drawer. So the last thing I'm going to do as far as prepping the base of the dresser is I'm just going to go around with some frayed burlap distress ink and just distress it up. And then after I am done with that, I'm going to seal it with a layer of Mod Podge just so I know this thing is protected and the paper isn't going anywhere. Okay, I'm ready to start adhering my little fronts to my drawers, and I've inked these with frayed burlap as well. So I'm going to just adhere these directly onto there, the bigger piece, and then the little ones that I cut out of the lady's face that's going to show, um, let me show you on this one. You can see how there's one in the background and then there's another one that's raised. To get that raised off of there, it just makes it look a lot better. Just cut another sheet of, this is just some craft cardstock that I had, and I'm just backing these with that on the back of it. That way it makes it stand out just a little bit more and gives it a little bit of a raised effect, and it just looks better that way instead of adhering it directly on top of the other. Okay, so I've got my drawer fronts covered. And then all you'll need to do is pick out what you want for your little knobs. You can use brads, you can use flat back pearls, you can use anything you want really. Um, the last step to do for your dresser is adding the little strips of paper to these edges here. I can't really tell you, this is probably like a, a tenth of an inch. It's really tiny, but you can just kind of, you know, it's hard to measure something that small. So what I do is I just cut little strips of paper until I get the right size. So I'm going to use that one on the top and the bottom little strips and then there's a thicker size right here. You can see the difference for the middle part and the two sides. So I'm just going to adhere those on there and when I do this I just hold it up and then I do a little crease with my fingernail here so I know where to cut at and then I like to trim my corners to make them look nice and clean and I'll show you what I'm talking about. after you get your piece on there to fit. I cut my corners at a diagonal so that everything fits on there properly. So you're just going to take the edge and just barely cut into it at a diagonal. Just like that. And this just gives you a clean edge when you do that to all of your sides like that, okay? So do that to all your edges and just adhere that. And then from this point forward, basically all you got to do is decorate it however you choose to do. And of course, there'll be a finished picture of mine. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions at all, just leave me a comment down below. Bye, y'all.